Hello, and welcome to another episode of Neon Kev. Today, we will be working to diagnose and repair this Agilent E8361A PNA series network analyzer. This unit was reported to have an unlock error of some sort, so let's power it on and see what we can find. Before we get started, I'd like to share some info about the PNA series of network analyzers, which have been in production for over 20 years. The PNA, which stands for Performance Network Analyzer, was first released by Agilent in 2001. These instruments are offered as a higher performance alternative to the ENA, or Economy Network Analyzer, which is also still produced. The first PNA models released were the E8350A series, which covered frequencies up to 9 GHz. The PNA was one of the first analyzers on the market to use mixer-based receivers instead of samplers. The use of mixer-based receivers allowed the PNA to achieve a much better noise floor, which greatly improved one of the VNA's most important performance metrics, system dynamic range. Later, Agilent released higher frequency PNA models with 20 GHz, 40 GHz, 50 GHz, and finally 67 GHz of frequency range. These units all follow the same two-port, four-receiver architecture. In fact, all models use the same receiver assembly, with frequency extension being done by source multipliers and external down-converting mixers for each receiver. Throughout the years, the processor and front panel were upgraded with A, B, and C revisions of each VNA model. In 2001, the first PNAs released ran Windows 2000 as an operating system. Later, the operating system was upgraded to Windows XP with the introduction of the 500 MHz Pentium 3 CPU board. The last of the legacy PNA series ran Windows XP with the 1100 MHz Pentium M processor and upgraded the storage to serial ATA. Now that the unit has finally booted, let's get into this repair. The first error that appears before the VNA application is loaded is this EEPROM error. A quick search online shows that this error message is linked to communication issues between a subassembly board and the CPU. For now, we will click No to bypass the error prompt and load into the VNA application. The VNA appears to be sweeping normally now. There are no phase lock or source on level errors present. However, after sitting for a while, the phase lock source on level error pair will intermittently appear and disappear. Because the unit sweeps normally most of the time, and the intermittent EEPROM and source on level phase on lock errors, I don't believe the issue is with a major RF assembly. My suspicion is an intermittent digital connection somewhere between a daughter board and the CPU. Before we start with reseating all of the boards and connectors, I want to do a few things. I'll begin by going into the EEPROM utilities and backing up the EEPROM. I'll also make note of all the checksums for each EEPROM in the unit. I'll also make a second bootable disk to use while troubleshooting. I've learned the hard way that you should never make any changes to the original boot drive. Always clone it and use your clone drive instead. For these early PNA units with IDE drives, I found this dual compact flash to IDE adapter that is plug and play. By changing over the boot drive to modern SLC NAND flash, you also get a noticeable CPU speed boost. Now that we've backed up the EEPROM and are booting off of a clone disk, we are ready to begin troubleshooting. The first thing I want to try is clicking yes on the EEPROM error prompt in order to generate a new checksum for the faulty board. Because we noted the checksums for each EEPROM, this might help identify which assembly is experiencing communication errors. Unfortunately, no changes were observed after clicking yes. Because there is no further information available about which board chip 3 could possibly indicate, I believe reseeding all of the boards and connectors is the best way to proceed. I'm going to take it a step further by using alcohol to carefully clean the board to board digital connectors, blow them out with air, and then use a Spartan amount of Deoxit D100L with a brush applicator to also improve contact quality. I'll begin by working on the removable assemblies accessible from the top of the instrument. These include the A12 Source 20, A11 Phase Lock, A10 Reference, 
A8 frac N and A6 signal processor or SPAM. After removing these boards individually and cleaning all of the associated connectors thoroughly, I do a cold power up to find no EEPROM errors. After letting the unit run for several hours, no intermittent phase locks or source on level errors have shown up in the error log either. To be thorough, I'll flip the unit over and check all of the connectors on the test set as well. Here we can see the majority of the RF components that make up the analyzer. While poking around, I did notice a loose RF connector on one of the high band receiver mixers. I'll go ahead and clean any digital connectors I can access and make sure that all of the RF connectors are torqued properly. After completing the final checks on a test set, we do a cold power up the next day to find the usual EEPROM error is no longer present. Additionally, no unlocks have manifested after letting the unit warm up for several hours. After cleaning up the imaging software, running a virus scan, and installing XP Service Pack 3, we are almost ready to call this job done. The last test to perform is the PNA operator's check. This is a self-test procedure for the VNA signal path, and will detect most underlying issues if there are any. To run the op check, we need to connect an open or short to the ports under test. The highest frequency standards I have are up to 50 gigahertz from my 85056A calibration kit. Hopefully these are good enough for a quick op check on this 67 gigahertz instrument. Now that the final PNA operator's check is passed, this repair is complete. After closing this box up, it's ready to go back to my local CalHouse and then to the customer. Stay tuned for more.